Algebra 2 cram, New York State Algebra 2 Regents. But no sweat, this is a common core cram session, so it's not limited to New York, neither is it limited to the United States. It can be used for any Algebra 2 course throughout the world, so shout out to India, Canada, the UK, Florida, Texas, California, North Carolina. Thanks so much for your support. Functions. Question 12, the domain of the natural log of x. The odds of someone doing what you tell them to do is slim, but I guarantee that if you cram with me, you'll become an Algebra 2 master. So inbox me at memedicine at gmail.com so that you can order and purchase the complete Algebra 2 cram session. What I'm doing is boosting everyone with a healthy dose of eye-opening awareness of their inner mathematical genius. You have lots of friends, classmates, peers, or even colleagues who are taking Algebra 2 alongside you as well. So tell them to inbox me at memedicine at gmail.com. All right, so let's delve into the question. Question 12, domain of a function. What is the domain of f of x is equivalent to the natural log of x or ln x? Is it going to be a all integers? And just in case you're wondering what an integer is, integers are counting numbers. These are the hash marks you see along a number line or an x-axis. So numbers like 1, 2, 0, negative 100, 10, anything that can be written along a number line, okay? Is it going to be answer choice B, all real numbers? Integers are included in the set of all real numbers as well as rational and irrational numbers. Rational numbers are numbers that can be expressed as fractions, such as 1 half, 2 thirds, 698 over 750, you name it. Um, the catch with rational numbers is that when they're converted to a decimal form, the decimal will either terminate or repeat, okay? And real numbers also include, as I previously briefly mentioned, irrational numbers. That's IR rational numbers, okay? Um, irrational numbers are numbers that can be expressed as fractions, but when you convert them to decimal form or when you try to analyze them, they have decimals that don't terminate or repeat. Um, or repeat, so they just continue on and on forever, sort of like an irrational person. Example of these numbers would be the square root of 2, the approximate value is like 1.41 dot dot dot, uh, also included in the irrational number set is the natural number E, which is our base here, our base is Euler's number, the natural number E. So let me just, uh, well, should I write this out for you? No, we'll get into that. Um, I know this is a long aside. We didn't even get through all the answer choices. But um, yeah, so the base E, let, yeah, let me just write it out for you. So yeah, LN really stands for the log um, base E which is the irrational number E, Euler's number. Euler is the dude that discovered it. It's the last name of the guy that um, discovered this number. And um, the approximate value of Euler's number is 2.71 dot dot dot. It has an extremely long term, never ending decimal, okay? Or is it going to be answer choice C? x is greater than or equivalent to zero, or answer choice D, x is greater than zero. Definitely press pause if you need to, and I'll give you a moment to think. Okay, so if you're a little rusty on the definition of the domain, in the context of Algebra 2, the domain of a function is the set of all real number inputs or x values um, where the graph of the function exists, okay? If a domain is not given, 
then it's assumed to be the largest set of real numbers for which the output of the function or the y values, y is also interchangeable with the term f of x, is defined and real. Okay, this means that when looking for the domain, the x, inputting the x values has to meet three basic criteria. All right, criteria A is that basically the arguments of logarithms must be greater than zero. That's x is the argument or the result. It has to be greater than zero because the log of zero is undefined and the log of a negative number would be imaginary. Remember that the logarithm format is actually the inverse of an exponential function. That means if it's the inverse of an exponential function, it can also be expressed as an exponential function. Because inverse functions, all you do is interchange the x and y values. So it's actually the same thing as this base b to the y equals x. And we see here that the logarithm format is actually backwards um, because the, the answer is given first, which is opposite to the way we normally express things in mathematics. We are, we're always figuring out the answer. We never really work backwards in figuring out the origins of the answer, okay? So that's why the argument or the result or the power, because the result in an exponential um, problem is called the power. The term power is often interchanged with the term exponent. That's actually a misnomer, it's wrong. Okay, so yeah, this bad boy right here cannot be equivalent to zero or negative. If it is negative, then you're getting into the realm of imaginary numbers, and that's not what we want to deal with at this level in Algebra 2, okay? That's for another course or another section. Okie dokie. The second criterion is criteria B, radicands with an even index. I just, you know, indicated uh, index 2 here, although it's kind of redundant to write that because whenever we see a radical without a numerical index, it's understood that we're taking the second root. Okay, I just wrote it here for, you know, conceptual purposes. So the radicand, which is the expression under the radical sign, has to be greater than or equivalent to zero. And we have to remember again that the roots of negative numbers are imaginary. When I say root, if you take the square root, okay, of a negative number, you, you would have to factor out the square root of negative one. And the square root of negative one is the imaginary number. That's where this whole thing comes from. It's abbreviated or it's given the label i, i being shorthand for imaginary. And again, we're not ready to tackle that at this level in Algebra 2. Maybe in another section or course. Or the domain of a function has to meet criteria c. So whenever you're dealing with a fraction, denominators cannot be equivalent to zero, okay? Because division by zero, which we all know is undefined. So for this particular problem, um, we're only dealing with a logarithm, the natural logarithm, so only criteria A is going to be relevant, and hence we kind of sort of already have it, our answer, all right? Um, so the argument of the natural logarithm, that means the x, must be greater than zero. So for f of x equals ln of x, the domain is greater than zero, and this is the domain expressed in inequality notation, and we see that it matches answer choice D, so answer choice D is going to be our correct answer choice. That is that um, x is greater than zero. This is the domain of the natural log of x.